Hello, people of the internet. John Perry here, and I am in the bedroom of Charles Darwin to talk about what it means to be a scientific authority. Now, typically we think of an authority as a king or a prophet or even your parents who can just give decrees and you must obey their decrees. In science, an authority is something very different. We're going to learn exactly what that means right now. Stated Casually presents... What is an authority in science? I am standing on the sandwalk. This is the pathway where Darwin formulated the theory of evolution. He had collected all the data in his early years as a scientist traveling on the Beagle. And in his later years, he walked this pathway every day, every morning, piecing together the things that he had seen throughout his explorations, piecing together the things he had read and the things he had seen in other scientists' collections. This is largely where the theory of evolution was formulated, right here on this very pathway. Science can be described as the collection and documentation of observable facts and an ongoing discussion about how those facts can be best fit together. In science, the true authority lies in the facts, in the data that has been collected. When you meet someone who is considered to be an authority on science, what that means is that this person knows what the facts are that have been collected, and they know what types of arguments people have been trying to make to link those facts together. This is all a scientific authority really is. That's the big difference between a scientific authority and a religious authority, or a king, or your parents when you're a little kid who says, you know, you just have to do this because you have to. The actual reason for my trip to England was not to visit Darwin's house. I came to England to attend an annual convention on zoology called Tet Zoocon. The convention is hosted by zoologist Dr. Darren Naish, a modern scientific authority. In a broad sense, he's an expert on tetrapod evolution in general. That's all land animals that have a backbone. But his real authority, the current focus of his work, is in dinosaurs. Not only has Darren done and published his own research on dinosaurs and their evolution, He's also deeply familiar with the work that other researchers have done on the subject. When you ask a question or read a book written by an authority like Darren, he or she won't just give you an answer and expect you to take his word for it. Instead, he'll tell you what the facts are, the tangible observations that researchers have collected over the years, and he'll tell you what researchers currently think those facts mean. This empowers you to accept or reject their conclusions as you see fit. From Galileo to Darwin to Jane Goodall, this is what good scientific authorities do. They guide you to the facts, they explain what we currently think those facts mean, and they let you decide for yourself. That is scientific authority stated casually. You might have noticed that this video was filmed in much higher quality than my stated casually videos are normally filmed in. That's because I'm in England being hosted by Ines Dawson, right here. She has a YouTube channel called Draw Curiosity. Draw Curiosity, and you should go check it out because it's amazing. A lot of really great science stuff, and she's awesome. Until next time, stay curious. <laughs> cool, I'll take that. All right. I, th I think between all those cuts, we're good. The other day, a friend of mine sent me a really cool picture of a bumblebee squirting out a jet of liquid behind it. I can't display it here due to copyright reasons, so instead here's a far less artistic version that I shot a couple of years ago on a high-speed camera.